Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty fascinating stuff. First up, Ethereum ETF to debut on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So if this is happening in Canada, how long before we see the same exact thing in the USA and other countries moving forward also? MicroStrategy has not stopped accumulating Bitcoin. Michael Saylor, the CEO, comes out and states that they have purchased approximately 2,500 plus more Bitcoins for 50 million in cash. So the question is asked, will there be any Bitcoin left for the rest of us? When large corporations like MicroStrategy are buying in mass on top of PayPal, as well as Grayscale and Square. Also the currency czar, Brian Brooks, goes on to Squawk Box and states that Bitcoin is here to stay and they're not going to kill it. However, other members of Congress are not so diligent in their research. So we'll take a look at all that, but first let's go on into the market. And before we get into that, it is December 5th, 10 a.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time. I am back in El Paso. I put out a, a, a quick poll and I just asked, does everybody want me to keep doing market cap breakdown under each video? And it's pretty close. I mean, we've had all, over uh, a thousand votes so far, and really it's 47 to 48. And then there's an other, so who knows? But I will just say this, I'm just gonna listen to everybody. And pretty much everybody says, we like it to keep it. Uh, some people say, no, get rid of it. But I think to meet everybody in the middle, let's just do it a little bit faster. Instead of going all the way through like 100, let's just stick with the top 20. Because if you're not in the top 20, well, maybe your project should work harder. And that's all I'll do. And I'll just do like a minute, two minutes, and that is it. Also, I'm gonna try to do it in dark mode because people who are in different time zones around the whole world are like, hey, I'm just waking up, man. So it's not making it so bright. So sure, I'll do that. So here's what we got. So uh, Bitcoin, 19K. Hey, not too bad. I'll take it right now. Uh, it looks like uh, it's maybe a little bit of a, of a rebound. We have little pullbacks, but that's normal. If you're new to the space, just know there's gonna be some pullbacks, two steps forward, one step back, sometimes three steps forward and 20 steps back. Just, just how it is. Anyhow, Ethereum uh, dipped below 600, but uh, again, I can see it rocketing up in 2021. I think it's going to be uh, massively successful, and I think it will actually outdo Bitcoin in terms of uh, ROI, but we'll see. XRP, 58 cents, watch out. You know, uh, it had an impressive run, but uh, it is uh, coming back down. And, and I can't say XRP pegged the quarter because it's not a quarter. It went up, uh, you know, 100%. So good for that. And good for all the XRP, XRP holders. But, you know, it is at 58 cents. Uh, I know it was around 70, 68, something, somewhere in there. So, but it is up uh, almost a percentage and 4.6 for the week. So, hey, we'll take it. Tether's Tether, uh, almost at 20 billion. Congratulations. Litecoin uh, was the darling lately. It's up 20% for the week. And uh, if you're a Litecoin holder, man, tip of the hat. Congratulations to you because I could not hold on to that for uh, when I bought a long time ago. I just didn't really see a purpose, but with PayPal listing it, I mean, it's, I mean, really, you almost have to own it. Just like Bitcoin Cash. Now it's in the number six spot. 284 looks like a market cap of 5.3 billion. And it's always jostling with Chainlink, which has a $5.2 billion market cap. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, I can see these, I can see all three of these coins uh, just jockeying for position. Unless Cardano comes out and really starts to do massive things. I see huge things for Cardano in 2021. I mean, with uh, Gogan coming about, with the smart contracts, with Voltaire, which they just put out a uh, release they're gonna do about uh, voting and things like that. This is going to be a huge project, and it's why I'm getting into Cardano Staking Pool. So I don't have the technical know-how, uh, but uh, two people reached out to me, and they are very technical. I've got uh, Brandon and Joe, and they were a part of the actual test net when it was like super tough to have, have a stake pool. They did all those things. They kept uptime up to 99.9%, .9%, and they're going to do the same thing with our stake pool, and that's why uh, we're all working together. But again, I have to make sure everything's right. This is important, so just bear with me. I don't like to rush things, <laughs> obviously, so uh, I'll let everybody know when it's ready. Polkadot down a little bit, Binance Coin, Stellar, anything great, top 20? Nah, not really. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to Bitcoin because it really all depends. You know, if we put in a US dollar, that's great, but what if you would just invest in Bitcoin? Would you be up? Well, with Ethereum, yeah, you'd be up 3% for the week. XRP, 0.3, uh, but down 6% for the week, that's a bummer. Litecoin, be up 7.5, but one for the day. What else is not too much really? So again, when you start to go down lower, you will get a little bit better returns. But uh, in the top 20, usually if you just invest in Bitcoin, you usually do pretty well. And nothing has really gone over to altcoins. I expect it to happen in 2021, but we will see. All right, that is it for that section. 
let's break into today's top stories. So first up, I found this fascinating. I was kind of hoping that the ETF would be in America, but uh, uh, because I'm a Yank and uh, that's what we like. We like everything to be in America uh, because it's how all Americans are. But I will take Canada. I mean, I'll take any ETF anywhere. This is a good solid thing for cryptocurrency space. So what is going on? Well, this just got released about an hour ago and it states next week, Canadian digital asset investment manager 3IQ will be launching an IPO for the world's first Ethereum ETF or the Ether Fund on the Toronto Stock Exchange, TSX, under the, under the uh, ticker QETH.U. The uh, launch is going to be $100 million, and the closing date of the offering will be no later than December 10th. 3IQ counts more than $400 million uh, Canadian assets under management. So uh, they are no lightweights and they are uh, experts in the game, I would say. When we talk about ETFs, really we start to think, in America, we start to think about grayscale because that's like the close. I mean, it really isn't, but I mean, I mean they they custody for people, uh, institu institutions and accredited investors, and actually everybody can go over there and, and uh, pick up some Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and they will custody it for you. So really you're getting like, you know, paper Bitcoin, which whatever, that's fine. It's kind of like what an ETF, I mean, almost the same thing. But the problem is, is that you're going to pay a premium on that. And to me, when I look at that, I'm like, well, why are people paying such a high premium? Why can't they do it themselves? Because institutions can't custody it themselves. They need someone else to do it. And they will pay a pretty penny because they know exactly where this market is going, just like we all do. So they're like, okay, we'll play the game. We're going to pay your 20%, 50%, whatever fee. And uh, you guys just custody it for us. And we'll just sit around and uh, reap the rewards. So, I mean, it just states here, despite a price premium, which at time creeped upwards of 500% relative to the net asset value for Ethereum. And that's true. They were paying like 5x just to get Ethereum. It's crazy. Grayscale's Ethereum Trust, the digital assets behemoth reports that more and more investors have been piling in. And there's a reason why Grayscale is always one of those companies that is always talking about, hey, we bought more Bitcoin. Hey, we bought more Ethereum. Hey, we got this. I mean, they have 500,000 plus Bitcoin. They are on their way to owning 1 million. Think about that. They're going to own 1 million Bitcoin. Now, they're going to custody for their for their institutional players and credit investors, but that's huge. I mean, that's a huge, that's 1 million out of 21 million. I mean, we talk about decentralization, how great it is, but uh, in reality, I kind of see a lot of centralization of who is actually buying up these assets. And we're going to talk about MicroStrategy in a bit, and uh, it's kind of worrisome, but uh, it is what it is. So that's why on this channel, I try to teach people about having strong hands and don't sell, don't let it slip. And I always feel like all these little dips and all these little shenanigans that are going on in the background, I always kind of feel like it's just like little plays for the big institutions and Wall Street and all these uh, you know, money managers to, to kind of get in and uh, kind of scoop up the Bitcoin that we kind of sell on the side because they're like, ah, ha, we got your Bitcoin and we're not going to let it go. Michael Saylor for MicroStrategy says, hey, I don't understand uh, traders. I'm just going to hold this for the rest of my life until my grandkids' lives. I'm not selling Bitcoin whatsoever. And I kind of feel that way. So that's why I'm always preaching about dollar cost averaging. Don't get over your head. And uh, when you have money left in the bank because you're dollar cost averaging, you don't feel that tightness in your chest and you don't sell and do something stupid like that. So that's just why I'm always harping on it. I don't want you to uh, fall victim to these manipulations and then you lose your Bitcoin and all your other, I mean, some other digital assets because you just couldn't hold on. Just hold on. Anyhow, in November alone, gold giant Van Eck launched a Bitcoin exchange traded note product in Germany. The Van Eck Vectors Bitcoin ETN and 3IQ also introduced the Bitcoin fund to Canada. So things are moving in the right directions for institutional investors to really get in. And these ETFs are exactly what big money players really want to have so they can get exposure to Bitcoin. This is Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, a pretty famous guy, you might know him. On Anthony Pompliano's podcast, he said, hey, I'd love to get into Bitcoin, but First of all, I don't want to custody that. I got a lot of money. I, what am I going to do? You know, like buy millions and millions and put it on some ledger. He's like, no, I don't want that responsibility, but I would like to do an ETF. And it's just what people are comfortable with in that uh, circle. So if we could give them the ETF and then it would, you know, raise the whole value or the whole uh, public consciousness of Bitcoin as well as other crypto assets, let's just do that. The whole hurdle, of course, is getting through the financial regulations here in the USA. But if, they're, if they have it in Canada and things are going out globally and there's a lot of different movement, I kind of feel it like uh, hopefully we can get it done. However, this whole ETF 
nonsense has been talked about since 2012 and before. So I never hold my breath, uh, you know, talking about an ETF. And quite honestly, I don't think we even need one. I just think it would be like a feather in the cap. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, and I'll make this quick, uh, Michael Saylor is a baller. I mean, this guy just buys uh, Bitcoin like it's going out of style. This was a tweet uh, yesterday, December 4th at uh, 3.40 p.m. He says, hey, MicroStrategy has purchased approximately 2,500 plus Bitcoins for 50 million in cash, just something laying around, in accordance with its treasure reserve policy. At an average price of approximately 19,427 per Bitcoin, we now hold approximately uh, a ton of Bitcoins. So there's, there's two things I wanna bring up. First is this, uh, Michael and everybody else who has invested in Bitcoin recently is looking like absolute uh, geniuses because just take a look here. This is what they paid for, 470, 475 million for the base price for Bitcoin. This was back in August. This is today's value. I mean, August, September, October, November, December. I mean, you're looking at four months and you almost doubled your money, almost. So uh, other businesses are looking at this like, why did we keep it on cash? Cash is on fire and the inflation rate is higher. And of course, we're gonna have quantitative easing, which is going to further debase that uh, currency. So why do we have this? Also, if you're a gold bug, I mean, look, I before I start, I own gold, silver, and Bitcoin. But I'm just saying, if you're owning a ton of Bitcoin, I mean, a ton of gold over Bitcoin, I think that's a mistake, honestly. And we see it right here. Now, gold bugs will say, you don't understand, it's been around for thousands of years, and this is all gonna go to zero. And yeah, sure, okay, whatever, maybe it will. But for right now, you have to tip your hat and go, look, well played, sir, because you guys almost doubled your money. And, uh, you know, gold has actually uh, receded over the last couple of weeks. And um, I mean, there's been little fluctuations here and there, but I mean, it was at a high of around 2000. What is it? 1900, 1800 now. So um, not a great play if you did what you did. Also, everybody's up pretty much. I mean, Galaxy Digital 134, now that at 318, that's pretty good. 50 to 89 for Square. And then just kind of look at the whole thing. And that's on top of what they just bought right now. That will go up, I think, in 2021 massively, and they'll look even smarter. Now, here's the problem, though. With all these big institutions coming in, this goes on to my first point, where I think there's some, there's some kind of shenanigans going on. There's some kind of like manipulation because they want you to drop your crypto so they can pick it up and they can make all the profits. And I'm going to tell you what, when I saw this blog, this was from Coinbase. They were the ones that did all those microtransactions to help MicroStrategy pick up all that Bitcoin in August, and they didn't move the price that much. So they had a lot of moving parts, and they helped them do this. That's fine. I'm not going to take it away from it. That is the business strategy, right? Good for you guys. You really bought up a lot of, of uh, Bitcoin for cheap. But here's the problem. I think when you have something like this, this was just one strategy. Do you not think that maybe they're in the background going, you know what, maybe we could put out a press release or maybe we can start to talk about uh, different things that could lower the price and maybe we could pick up some other uh, Bitcoin, you know, just a couple hundred thousand, some right, you know, whatever here and there. I, I think they will. And I think it's all a ploy against you. So keep your strong hands. You know where this is going. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, everybody and their mother was talking about this while I was driving to uh, <laughs> to El Paso from Houston yesterday, and it was huge. I even uh, I had a little bit of time, so I tweeted this out, and uh, I mean it's fantastic. And if you haven't seen it, I, I have to play it because it's it's huge. One of these biggest arguments against Bitcoin is that the governments will ban it, and of course some people will say, "Well, good luck with that." Because first of all, you got to shut down the entire uh, internet. Then some people will say, well, but they could, you know, they could ban the exchanges. Well, you can do that. But uh, guess what? Every other country out there is like, oh, you banned it over there? Great. Just come over here because we'd love to help you out. And we'd love to make all those millions and billions of dollars. So I think it would be uh, very foolish for that to happen. But this is Brian Brooks. He is the czar over there at the office of the comptroller of the currency. And he's doing great things. If you haven't followed him on his or his Twitter handle, I mean, it's great. It's like a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of great things he's talking about, especially things about cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, this guy really is in the game. And uh, when he said this, I mean, this was fantastic. Just take a listen. Our boss at Coinbase, the CEO, Brian Armstrong, um, sent out last week, and he said that the Treasury could be, quote, planning to rush out some new regulation regarding self-hosted crypto wallets before the end of the term. Is that true? 
Yeah, look, um, and Melissa, you know, rumors abound in Bitcoin more than almost any other place. What I would tell you is we're very focused on getting this right. We're very focused on not killing this. And it's equally important that we develop the networks behind Bitcoin and other cryptos as it is that we prevent money laundering and terrorism financing. So believe me, there's a balance here and it's going to work for everybody. So that's a neither a yes or no answer to that. Should we be expecting some new regulations by by the end of the Trump term? I think you're going to see a lot of good news for crypto by the end of the Trump term. Some of it's going to have to do with banks connecting to blockchain. Some of it's going to be more clarity around the nature of these assets. So believe me, there's going to be very positive messages coming out. At the same time, it's a dangerous world out there. We have to be honest about that. But nobody's going to ban Bitcoin. Nobody's going to ban some of these transmission technologies. I think it's going to be a lot less bad than people were worried about. So, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, remember the beginning when she said that uh, Brian Armstrong put out a little tweet and said, ah, there's a little different problems. They're going to start to rush regulations coming in as, as far as wallets. Well, do you remember what happened with the Bitcoin price after he put that out? Dropped. Guess what happened? <laughs> well, MicroStrategy just bought up a, a bunch of Bitcoin. Don't you think that maybe that might have happened at that point? I don't know. I don't know. It could could be, couldn't be. It's just one of those things. You see, Brooks gets it. He understands what's going to happen. He understands where everything is going. And he understands that um, retail and uh, every other person on the planet, they want something faster, better, cheaper. And if we can do some of that with digital assets and cryptocurrency, then why not? Now, he understands exactly what it is. Here's the problem. When you have a new technology, it's scary for some people because they just don't understand it. And they get worried and they want to regulate the living tar out of it. And this is a problem. So this is something that, first of all, I, I'm 99% sure will not pass, but it has to be brought up and has to be talked about. And before we go off in the deep end and go, I hate this person or I hate this group or whatever else, you have to understand, it's not that people are purely 100% evil. That's just not what it is. I think part of it is, is that people are un uneducated and they are ignorant and they need to have someone sit them down and explain to them, I know you're afraid. I know this is new to you, but this is why it is unfounded. And here's how we can work together. And I talked, or I, I talked, I tweeted out, I said, you know, Brian Brooks is a prime example here to sit these people down and say, hey, you know, I'm going to bring together these, these Congress people and say, look, you don't have anything to worry about. Digital assets, cryptocurrencies, it's an open platform and is decentralized. And we can do a lot of good here. Now, Here's what this whole bill is about. This is Rashida Tlaib, Democrat from Michigan, I believe. And the whole thing is this. She's worried about stable coins and these corporations such as Tether and USDC and, and all the and Paxos, and they're able to issue these stable coins. She's like, I don't like corporations doing that. I want banks to do that. And Again, the problem here is that stable coins aren't familiar to people in Congress and regulators. They just don't know exactly what it is, except for Brian Brooks and his team. So Tlaib introduced a bill co-sponsored by Reps Lynch and Chewy Garcia that offers a solution. They want to require stable coins that promise a fixed value in U.S. dollars or petty the dollar to be issued by banks. This constitutes taking a deposit, which is something only banks can do, not tech companies, nor the associations they set up to issue coins on their behalf. And what she really wants is for them to work with minority-owned banks. So in regards to this, Brian Brooks said, fine, uh, here's some support for minority-owned banks. We have not been doing a good enough job. We'll help support this issue. This was actually two days ago. But then he further stated this, and this is the whole meat and potatoes of the whole article. He describes the bill as a solution searching for a problem. He says some of the provisions, such as ensuring adequate reserves and the ability to redeem stable coins for dollars, can be handled without requiring issuers to become banks, which he argues would stifle competition. So essentially what they're saying is like, like Circle and USDC and Tether and uh, I mean Paxos, they have to become banks to issue these types of stable coins. And that would be awful because there's a lot of hoops to go through to become a bank, just ax cracking. <laughs> and he, he makes a good point. He says, what if email got invented and somebody said only the post office can issue email accounts? So it's the same type of thing. Look, let's call a spade a spade. Banks have screwed over people left and right from the beginning of time, okay? So you got things like uh, the Wells Fargo account scandal where they just created checking accounts out of uh, thin air and uh, without anybody's consent for their customers. They just kept doing it. And then of course you had all the different fines that JP Morgan gets, 30 billion in fines and counting. And believe me, I don't know what's going on in the background. They've also been spoofing metals and things like that for I don't know how long. 
Um, it's just like a cost of doing business. And then you have the Dutch bank find 900 million for money laundering. And they just kind of pass over those, those different problems to the consumer. And you got something like this, Bank of America, 16 billion in financial fraud. And of course, again, the people that are the most susceptible are the poor and the downtrodden. So when Tlaib is talking about these different issues, I mean, she should be worried about the people that are in her district, but she's going about it, I believe, the wrong way by giving power back to these bankers when in all reality, all they're going to do is take the information and all the different power that we give them and go, thanks, we're going to screw you over some more. So just get out of the way of innovation and everything should be fine. Again, I think this is an opportunity to teach and to include and bring everybody to the table. Because I think you're gonna get a lot farther by meeting in the middle than just dividing everybody and trying to move forward. So those are just my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And that's really it. The last thing I'll say is, well, first of all, thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. I really appreciate it. A lot of different information out there, but I think it's good information. Also, don't forget that uh, Dan teaches crypto.com, free website. It is up right now. You can learn a lot of great information for free. And I try to condense as much as I possibly can. We break it into five different modules, basic safety, investing, reviews, and then the how do I. I think how do I and basics from the data that I've been seeing, for everybody who actually clicks on it, these are the two big ones and investing is actually coming in like a close second. But if you take a look at like, how do I, like how do I buy Theta? How do I use Uniswap? How do I update the firmware, my Nano Ledger? All the different questions that you should know are right there. And then of course, uh, the basics are just like, you know, what is cryptocurrency? What is Bitcoin? So for most of us here, it's not important because you, you probably know all that stuff already. But uh, if you have someone who needs to know that, then send them this link. Uh, there is a link in the description of every one of my videos. It looks just like this. And then come on over. And of course, it's 100% free. And that's it. So again, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there'll be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. YouTube, do all their magic and whatnot. But uh, that is all. So uh, thanks again. See you on the next one. Bye.